Hi there. Welcome to Tech Talk Weekly. What's the only story that could knock AI out of the news? This is our weekly show where we talk about three to four interesting tech topics, get you something fun about the library, and send you on your way in about 20 minutes. Today, I have Ken from Collier City Library. How are you doing out there, sir? I'm doing great. I'm glad that I've been invited to join this. I like to have a this way I have a place to add my knowledge and experience and uh, just it's fun. Yeah. general fun. Yeah, and that's it. And by the way, the, uh, March is Creation Station Month. Uh, it's Creators Month on some calendars. I call it Creation Station Month because it's my place. And Ken works up at the Creation Station Music uh, Space at the Collier City Library, which is a really hopping place if you haven't been around. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk about that afterwards, but we have got a lot of stories. And one of them, the, to get us kicked off here, there is a citizen science project that we missed this week. Didn't get it on. The, it came. It came out over the weekend. Last weekend was birding, going out and identifying birds, and it's a citizen science project thing where you go out and you check on the birds in your area. You make some recordings. You take care of what's there and upload it to a site. Have you ever done this before, Ken? Have you ever well, that done? That I haven't done. No, I haven't done. It. Have you done any of the citizen science stuff? I know you said you you look you. Pay attention to birds. Have you ever done the citizen science part of it, though? I'd like to, but I did volunteer. It's funny because I did volunteer at the Wildlife Care Center in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, nice. Feeding the, ba feeding the baby birds. What kind of birds did they have out there? They were, they were so young. I, I'm not even sure, but probably um, they were small. Sparrows, nice. maybe things like oh, that. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. But they were very small, and I had to feed them every two hours, so... Nice. I, I like I telling Bob that um, 20 years ago, we used to have many, many birds in South Florida and it yeah. just disappeared. Yeah, I think that that's that's the same kind of thing of everywhere. We've talked about it uh, a couple of months ago on the show about the number of species that look like they are in decline slash being a, uh, you know, becoming extinct, et cetera. Um, and also just climate change as Animals move from one area to another. There's, you know, things are moving up the coast. Right. I mean, as we, they get like that. Yeah. I mean, we we move. We don't like moving either. I'm sure they don't like it. Yep. And they don't have air conditioning. But that's fun that you, you did regular birds. It wasn't like a sexy science. No, they were regular of, birds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we take yeah. care of bald eagles. No, you just take care of the every everyday uh -huh. birds. That's a good thing. Starts, it is a food chain. Yeah, that's an awesome, awesome thing. Speaking of chains and getting all the stuff together, and by the way, everybody, of course, we're going to have all of the whole things here for you to uh, in links in the show notes to do that, to tell you where these stories are, because this one here is kind of interesting. Well, I think they're all interesting, but this one right here, first recycling for our, the big car batteries that are out there for all these electric cars and all these things. Here's your first recycling factory that is opening up and this is out there in arizona which is coincidentally also where they are right around the corner from where the new tesla plant is the big gigawatt plant to build the new batteries and not too far away from this new reusable battery farm out in california of using those same kind of batteries yeah i think they're by the mojave they're not far away from each other they're all no. kind of in the same area yeah in and, it's, and and the flatlands yep. are all people know they've been there for many many years they just haven't been utilized until recently yeah my, and my I think take on this is that people don't me. really realize how limited the resources are that china bought up half of africa and they already have a lot of the resources so Anything we can do to recycle to get use out of is a dramatic advantage yeah. to us. A hundred percent is one of those things where we definitely need to make sure that we are getting our getting our money's worth, so to speak, out of this. And partly it's because these batteries take up a lot. You can't just go dump the stuff back into the earth. You, we're not doing that. And 
these batteries are still perfectly usable. We, you can run with these things using them uh, outside of a car. When you're in a car, you need some extra safety measures on it. You need to make sure that it can maintain a charge for a longer period. In something like this, especially on the battery storage farms, put them up as the picture here shows, which is why I've left that one picture there. Um, put the solar farm. It charges up the batteries. You discharge the batteries almost instantaneously as you're feeding it into the power grid. And but since it's a shared resource, it's not like it's drawing on one battery at a time. Exactly. That's the idea, correct? It's yeah. shared usage. Yep. And you can keep on, you can take in all that sun, you can take in all that stuff, use it, and then send it right back out. And then once it can't be used anymore, then you send it back over to that recycling plant. And now they can take take the remaining bits out of those batteries and send them through for recycling and have them melted down properly, safely, and going in. It's a great, great cycle now of things going in. I think it's we're getting closer to actually making this sustainable well mercedes is supposed to be going all electric by 2030 and that's around yeah. the corner yeah well, yeah yeah <laughs> i know seven years from now they chevy, say they're gonna do it chevy ford and mercedes are three companies that are supposed to be all electric that aren't quite there yet there's four all electric companies already even though they make smaller numbers volvo has said that they're going to be by 2035 super just introduced the first one i thought they would have done it years ago ironically yeah, yeah toyota is the one that's lagging the farthest behind weirdly and the other ones who started it with, with, with the prius many yep. many many 15 years ago yeah yeah it's crazy 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 um here's the story you brought to us though this is what i was teasing at the top Every week, there's a ton of stories about chat GBT and AI and everything. And I had to just kind of chuckle at what story took all of that off of the news. Balloons. And for a week, we went with a new story about a balloon, it seemed, every couple of hours. Um, so in case you, you got lost in all the mess, there was a large Chinese 200 feet high. Ford. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you gave us a great graphic. Let's show that graphic. So here's where this is a picture of that balloon up there. This is the Chinese balloon. You hopefully have seen an image of it before, but you probably haven't seen this type of thing, which is one. How did these objects come out, come around us and all these things? And you found this great idea here of, just how high that particular balloon was flying. The thing about that high up is your the wind is different. Obviously, the gravity is less and the air is lighter. So mm -hmm. you're not going to drift as much as you would, obviously, if you're lower. And what happens is the radars don't go that high. It's like having glasses on with no peripheral vision. Yep. If they're not looking for it, they're not going to find it. Right, and, and China's that's been doing this things. for many, 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 many years. And the thing is that they're always they seem to be doing things that we're not doing way before we're doing them. Yeah, it's interesting because, and that's one of those things that happened. Um, but I do uh, that. This kind of like exposed that, like you said, that blind eye that we didn't, we weren't paying attention to. Almost Obviously, the elephant, the elephant yeah. in the room. Yeah, and and so many people. Um, got caught by surprise. That's why there were so many of these stories. And unfortunately, the four different balloons getting shot down, only one of them was an actual Chinese spy balloon type thing. Uh, one, the one shot down over Lake Erie was a citizen science project of launching. A, it was a couple hundred dollar balloon that got launched up there by some college students effectively to go track things. Uh, this other story here about weather balloons that NASA and other people launch all the time. So the only thing they can do is maybe put a device on it to track it, to identify it as non-lethal. They don't really know how to do it. And the whole big thing about it in the New York Times is we don't, they don't know the, the good from the bad. Right. And that's, and part of that becomes back to the idea of what kind of balloons, why are you launching your balloon? Who is it that's going up there to do it? 
and what kind of range are you getting? Most of these ones, in fact, three of the you know, the last three that happened were citizen science projects. They were they were very small things, things that if we hadn't been like on this heightened awareness to look for, would have just ignored because, like you said earlier, they've been doing this for decades. Area you know, Roswell. Roswell yeah. was a balloon. I think mean, people say it wasn't, but it was a balloon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and th- things like this where, and if anybody out there is wondering, oh, why in the world would anybody want to do this without telling somebody? They do tell people, they do report on the citizen science sites, and they've got public websites that feed the data from their balloons live to everyone, tracking things like temperature. As you mentioned, Ken, uh, you know, the atmosphere gets really thin up there. How close can you get to the vacuum before your balloon pops? And imagine that, I mean, you're a young college student, you're really interested in doing this kind of physics work and stuff. You're not you're just interested in, okay, how can I make this nice little container that goes up there? How much power can we get out of it? How long can the radio transmit? And yeah, taking, you know, a $400,000, $500,000 missile to shoot down a $200 right, science yeah. project. But you know, these they things happen. Overkill. Yeah. So where do you think, what do you think is a possible solution? Because I know you've read up a lot of well, these stories say- on it. I don't for know for, pe- for people to know that they're there and that, they, like you said, that they're safe. I would, I would say that you'd have to need have some sort of tracking device that would identify it as as um, registered, maybe to know if you're from a college or something, mm-hmm. you would have an ID. Um, I mean, I the only thing I can think of is having some sort of tracking device. Yeah. Otherwise, well, I mean. They- you do something similar like that t- with drones, but it's not tracked on the device. It's tracked by uh, the person using because there's you know a lot of uh, air restrictions around where you can use drones, what size drones, and stuff like that. That and there, it's only part of the big picture because there were articles, same article I was reading there that they're using, they're testing uh, missiles high in the same area because yep. they can't be tracked. Same reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's there's, called uh, uh, there's a s- near space. Right. That's the area. It's like a yep. window of opportunity where you can do whatever you want because no one's going to know. No one's going to say anything if they did. How are you going to prove it? Yeah, it's the Carmen line, as it's called, where the atmosphere is so thin that it's virtually undetectable. And now you are into space. Uh, if you remember last year, we had a couple of episodes where when the private astronauts were going up, should they be considered astronauts? Should they be considered passengers? Because you have to pass that Carmen line to hit space to go out there and do it. And that's what these kids are doing. That's what a lot of these different things, none of the ones that are up there right now are reported to have done any harm other than just tracking and releasing, which comes back to what are they capable of tracking? What are they capable of following? And you can do that with a basic cell phone in your pocket and you can track all the electronic communications going around you. So balloons are just, I think it just took everybody by surprise. And that's why it just blew up across for like a week and a half. It's like every day my newsfeed was another balloon story or a new idea about. So just craziness. Okay, but I do have, yeah, tell me, Ken. I'm saying that there's a lot going on that people, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Yep, exactly. And there's one more balloon story that almost missed out on everything. And just like we were talking about going to space, someone's doing it in a balloon. Two-seater bubble connected to a balloon and they launch you up. So you go up into space, take a look around the planet and then come back down. Now, what did they use as a, I guess, a propellant? Or the same thing. Them? They're using the same kind of helium hydrogen mix, etc. It's not. It's it's not unpowered, but it's not a powered space flight like you would think about with a rocket. It is. They launch it by balloon. It goes on up, and it goes through uh, two hours to get up as high as it can get. It's about fifteen miles all the way up there, and you're in. A 4.9, not even a five foot wide (laughs) bubble that you get strapped into and you go up 25 miles high and then come on back down. 
In a parachute, I guess. It's sort of almost like a parachute. Oh, the balloon just lets you back down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is, I mean, you can see, here's the two people standing next yeah. to it. <sighs> I think it's a cool right story. Now. I think this is a lot of fun. I cannot picture my wife letting me get away with doing this. Can you imagine going up? You, you said tracking. This is definitely one of those that everybody's going to want to see tracked. Exactly. You're right. This is a perfect example of something where how do you judge whether it is? You can't go by the balloon. You got to go by what's in the balloon. Yeah, exactly. And you know who it is and you know where it is and all that other kind of good stuff. So, yeah, it's space is becoming a regular thing. Well, and people don't realize how crowded space is. Yeah, yeah that's oh. issue, but it's it's so much stuff up there already. We're just joining the party. Yep, 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 yep. It's going to be so much fun. But yeah, we're we're getting in space is just becoming a regular thing for everyday people instead of you know the handful of 14, 15 astronauts. It's and, and it, William Shatner. <laughs> yeah, and William Shatner. We have one final story today that I wanted to cram in here because this is really important. And it's about the pandemic, the other pandemic that's been around longer. But we now have a fifth person who has had been cured of HIV, which is a very significant thing. I know you've heard in the past, oh, the, you know, these drugs will take care of it and, and it suppresses your HIV and you can lead a normal life. Yes and no. One, you still need to be taking the drugs. To you are still HIV. You just are suppressed. You can't detect the virus in your system. They've done this new test. This is the fifth person to go through this stem cell transplant here. And it by has the same, removed. By the same laboratory? Same, same uh, group of uh, hospitals. Yeah. The same, there's a group of hospitals that have been working on this. And this is not something like they just announced this because they just did the surgery effectively the transplant um, last week. This is four years that he has been totally cured. This is only, and it's only the fifth time they've been able to pull it off. So that's really important. It is a super significant medical advance for us as a society because the HIV epidemic has been going on for much longer, has killed more people. In Africa, it does never stop. Yeah, exactly. As far as I it, know, in Africa, it never stopped. No, it, it has never stopped anywhere. It's just we've been using drugs to suppress it and make it look better here in the States and in Europe. But yeah, it is a, a really huge breakthrough. This is one of those breakthroughs that by making this all work together, this is those next steps to curing other diseases of being able to tie these things in and make this really work. So I'm really, kind of really ironically, this. COVID opened up a lot of things as far as development. Yep. Just like a the lot space of, program yeah. wasn't just about space. It was about other things. Right. And all the uh, auxiliary benefits that we get out of these exactly. things and going. Yeah, exactly. Tell us what's going on, Ken. I know some people might have noticed there's noise going on behind you because Collier City is an active place. You guys have all sorts of stuff going on there. What's going on up in the next week or two there? Um, we have a uh, Women's History Month coming up, and we're having a um, where children are come in, young adults, and they can decorate their hair. We've got uh, model heads, and they come with the hair, and we have a specialist coming in so cool. they can get hands-on from an expert on how to decorate themselves so it's mm -hmm. something they can apply to their own selves nice and uh, we're also honoring cj walker who was the first black american yeah. to have a, a makeup company yeah madam cj yeah. walker one of the yes. fir Af first african-american millionaires yes if not i think yes, she was exactly. the first if not yes and um we're really looking forward to the summer learning program because the foundation has paid for multiple programs yeah um, some of them haven't been offered to other places but our community has got them one of them is is from mods museum of discovery of science they're having a two-session program and um it'll be featured in the uh summer newsletter so be yeah. sure to look out for it and like i said there'll be two sessions it's at multiple locations yeah, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Summer this year, it's it's called All Together Now. We, yeah, we'll be making a big deal about it on all of the library programming coming up in the course of April and May to get you all ready and going on for this. And of course, we have the music creation station, and we're looking to hire a uh, 
Right, the creator and residents. Yeah, that's creator be residents who can share their knowledge with people who don't have them because the person running it has other responsibilities and he's not experienced in the outside of the library. So yeah. it'd be good to have a collaboration of the two people together. Yeah, it's going to be really fun out there. You, you, you guys are growing by leaps and bounds. All the construction, by the way, if you haven't been by Collier City recently, all the construction's done. <laughs> the parking lot's back open. <laughs> Thank you again for being here, Ken. I'm going to throw up our ending screen here. If there is a library or librarian you'd like to see featured on the show one week, reach out to us, creationstation at broward.org. We'll see everybody next week. It's my pleasure.